and welcome to Swan Island Dahlias. I'm Heather, part of the team, and today we're going to talk about growing dahlias in containers and starting dahlias early indoors. Although they are both related, there are some big differences. So this is really about starting them in pots or growing them in containers outside. If you are looking and wanting to wake up your tubers just to pre-sprout them, this is not the video. Be sure to t check out my waking dahlia tubers up video because that's really where you want to be this is if you're going to start them indoors we're going to start with that and then we'll talk about growing them outdoors in pots so first thing to remember is that you can start your dahlias indoors if you're in a, a cold climate maybe you're in alaska maybe you're in northern u.s somewhere who has a very short growing season you want to start your dahlias early just because you want to actually have a good blooming season this is not necessary and it is not something everybody should be doing. So you're only doing this if you're in a cold climate and need a little extra growing time to see these actually gorgeous bloom all summer. So if you are starting your dahlias indoors, first thing to remember is that they're going to need a consistent 70 degrees temperature to be growing in. So that means they can't be started outdoors when it's cold or brought indoors and outdoors during the day. They really need a consistent 70 plus degrees. So that either means in your house, maybe you have a small greenhouse, but something that's heated that's consistent in their temperature. So 70 plus degrees. You want to start them, I would say, in one to three gallon pots. I know a lot of people think that they can just start them in a little four by four pot, or maybe they start them in solo cups. It's really too little. You need to give that tuber room to put out some roots and get started. So please, we've seen some horrible pictures, but you should not be using tiny, tiny little containers to start your dahlia tubers. As you can see, they come in all shapes and sizes. That's genetics. Shouldn't judge them by the size. We sell the biggest ones, plant the littlest guys. So some are long and skinny, some are round and thick, like a bulb, some are like the size of your thumb. So don't judge the tubers you get. If you're purchasing from us, they will all have their names hand stamped on them so that you can identify them. Now, sometimes we do have to dust the peat moss off that you find in the bag, but you will also find that we have started providing plant tags. So it's got the variety name, it's bloom size, and it's plant height. So be sure to match those up when you get your order. So you've got your pot, one to three gallons is ideal. You're gonna be in 70 plus degrees. Now it's really important that you have the right medium in your pots or you will be very disappointed. We recommend Sun Grow Professional Growth or Growing Mix. It really is made up of peat moss, pumice, um, a little bit of soft bark. It really has no value to it. It's very light for the tubers to get started in. It does not have compost. It does not have fertilizer and it's really perfect. We don't want to burn these guys. You've got to remember that they're not already growing. They don't have a root system established. So you're going to end up putting this tuber right into it. It needs to sprout and it needs to put out very tender roots. And if it's too rich of soil, you will burn them. So no miracle grow, no organic potting soil that's got compost and things added. Really need to find plain old dirt. And if you don't have any, go out in a garden, ask a neighbor, Plain old dirt is good too from your garden if you need something, but peat moss really works perfect and we use it a lot here at the farm. So this is a great um, starting mix. If you can't find the exact brand, look for something that's just very light, no fertilizers added. The other thing is because you need a decent uh, pot size, you need a decent amount to get these guys growing in. So I filled my pot about uh, halfway at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and choose Flip Flop is the variety to, uh, name that this tuber. He's got a nice little eye starting there. I know you wouldn't be able to see that, but I don't need to pre-sprout him. I don't need to wake him up. He's naturally waking up on his own. Now, as I said, tubers come in all sizes and shapes, but regardless of their size and shape, you need to lay them horizontal. So I'm gonna lay this guy in there. Now your sprout or your eye or growth is going to come from the crown so that's what I wanna make sure is in the middle of the pot. I'm kinda of gonna bury him down there a little. Gonna put my plant tag in, and I'm gonna cover him completely four to six inches deep. Now we've seen a lot of pictures. People are leaving half the bodies out, leaving the crowns out. You do not wanna do that. You want to cover this guy completely. 
because you are just starting it indoors and planning to transplant it outside. So you want it to get the most strong start it can so that you have a strong plant when it grows bigger. So this guy is covered four to six inches deep of soil. I'm actually not gonna water him today. I'm gonna give him a week or so and then maybe I'll just dampen this down once a week. But he does not need a lot of water to get started. So be sure to keep it in a warm area, not a lot of water, and wait till you see some sprouting. You should see sprouts usually indoors in a really consistent temperature in about two to three weeks. Although in the ground, it can take three to five. So some are a little slower and that's normal. They may not all pop through on the same day. So this guy is great. When I go to transplant him, I'm gonna take as much of the dirt that's possible and put it directly in that hole, still making sure that my tuber is four to six inches deep when I transplant it. If you only cover it one inch and you go transplant it and you have a nice little two inch sprout and your tuber is right below the surface of the soil, you have a very weak plant. If you have a really long sprout when you go to plant, you have to pinch that sprout back to one to two inches in length. Otherwise, that long sprout that you've held up with some dirt has no strength and the plant will fall over all summer. That is why we want you to go ahead and cover it four to six inches deep. Let that sprout push through the soil. That's how it gets its strength for you to have a nice, strong, sturdy plant during the growing season. You'll wanna go ahead and just watch these guys indoors. And when you get ready to plant them out, transplant them. They will need extra water to get going and keep them happy because you've just uh, disrupted their roots. Remember you start them no more than six weeks ahead of time. And the bummer is when you transplant them, you lose about two weeks in the transition time. So just know that you can get a great head start, but if you've only got a couple weeks to start them ahead of time, it's really not worth it because you're gonna lose that time when you transplant. Be sure your temperatures are warm enough day and night that there's no chance of frost because anything you plant outside that's up and growing in a dahlia will die back if you get hit by a surprise frost. So be sure to wait a little longer. It won't hurt anything. If you're waiting just to plant directly in the ground, make sure your ground is 60 degrees. So we don't plant here on our farm until the ground temperature has gotten to 60 degrees. We plant directly in, we don't pre-pot or pre-sprout any of our tubers. So let's move on. We've got this guy, this is for starting indoors. This is not gonna be grown in this pot all summer. So we're gonna move on to what we can grow in all summer. So we recommend that you find a pot that's 12 by 12, 15 by 15. Ideally 15 by 15 is what you wanna use. I know it kind of seems large, but if you think that a dahlia clump is going to spread and develop more tubers, you're going to end up with a big mass. And if you don't give it proper room, you're gonna to struggle to see proper blooming. So it's really important that you have a large container. So I would recommend 15 inches by 15 inches. So 15 inches deep, 15 inches wide, it gives it a nice space. Same thing on this for soil. You can use the medium you started with or what I talked about, the professional grow mix here but you can also use regular garden soil, dirt, that you can go out in your own yard and grab. We recommend two thirds regular garden soil to one third potting soil. That is the ideal mix. If you can get your hands on some real dirt, it holds moisture and value for nutrients the best. So we'd rather you not use straight potting soil in your pots if you're gonna be planting out for the summer as we want them to bloom and be happy all summer long. It's really important that it's not just potting soil. So in this case, Get as much dirt as you can. Obviously, I'm not putting a lot in here, but you would want to put a few shovels in, get it mixed around well, and that should help make sure your medium does not have a lot of organic compost or anything in it that's too rich. Remember, these are tender shoots, tender roots starting, and it can't burn them. So we're gonna plant our tuber. I recommend in a barrel like this, only one tuber, and that might seem crazy, but it's going to grow big. This variety, is make a wish, nice little round tuber there. It's already got a nice little green sprout on it. I'm gonna plant it four to six inches deep. I'm gonna lay it horizontally, push it down in that soil. Again, I'm gonna cover it up with a mix of regular soil and potting soil, and it needs to be a good four to six inches deep. I'm going to cover it completely, put in my nice little name tag I've got there so I can be sure I know who's who, but I want it to have some good strength so then that guy can come up and grow all summer long. So the one benefit to growing in containers is that maybe you can see them and grow them on 
different um, environments that you couldn't if you didn't have a large garden. They grow great in pots as long as the pot is big enough, the appropriate soil, and then the big challenge is keeping it watered properly during the summer. If you've got a green plant and no blooms, you're really looking at a watering issue, not watering enough. Once the dahlia is up and growing, it will take lots of water. That's in both ser uh, scenarios here. Remember that dahlias do not take much water at the beginning. Lots of water once you see that green growth above the ground. So we highly recommend that you continue to fertilize them. They will need fertilizer. I talked about no fertilizer at the beginning. They're too tender, you'll rot them out. But once you see that green growth, it's water and fertilizer time. So in a pot, you're fertilizing about every two to three weeks with a low nitrogen fertilizer, similar to growing in the ground, but in the ground we fertilize every three to four weeks um, with a low nitrogen fertilizer. So it's really important that you follow our growing instructions and they can be found on our website at dahlias.com or in our catalog if you have them, or you can follow our videos on YouTube. We've got lots of information to share with you, but I just wanted to give you a sneak peek about growing in containers. Some people believe it can't be done. It can be done you just need to make sure you've got the proper medium and the proper size pot so that you can have lots of success. Make sure to have a beautiful day and check out our social media and our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and take care.